Barnsley Football Club was all of my life. It was a mining industry I came from. Up in the northeast, there was quite a few colliery welfare teams. And I played for one with a, with a name called Morrison Busty. Morrison Busty Colliery Welfare. And I was playing for a centre back, of course, in them days, as an as a 18, 19 year old. And fortunately, the, the manager of a, a fella called Charlie Thomas, who managed South Shields in the Northern Counties, which was a fantastic standard in the Northeast. Everybody knew South Shields. He came to watch a player at Morrison Busty, a centre forward, who was scoring goals. Now, fortunately, he had a poor game. But I just, on the day, just had a fairly good game. And he called, him, he called the, the committee after the game and said he wanted to sign the centre back, which was fortunately to be me because how well I played. And that's how it all started in the North East. And then I went to South Shields, I was there for my probably just a season at South Shields, playing with, with semi-professional players at uh, South Shields. And, uh, and it went from there. And there was a chap which at them days, the, the, the manager, Johnny Steele, had a chap called Harry Natras, who did all the scouting in the North East. And it was him that spotted me up at, uh, at South Shields to come play for Barnsley. John Steele was the manager, of course, at that time. And he came, he was up in Scotland, was John. And we made arrangements. It wasn't just Barnsley that was chasing me, it was four or five other clubs. And bigger clubs than Barnsley, believe me. They were, uh, but I just, he was up in Scotland on a holiday. And he made arrangements, obviously, for Harry Natras to, make, to come and meet me one Sunday morning in a place called the Station Hotel, smack opposite uh, Newcastle train station. So we went down there for 11 o'clock, me and me, my father went down there and uh, we, we negotiated or spoke to, to Johnny Steele, obviously, down there, and I signed that day. And the reason that I, I wanted to come to Barnsley because it was a mining community, the same as what I, I was brought up in. It was like you say, my father worked in the mines all his life. So yes, it, um, Johnny Steele came down to the station hotel one Sunday morning and uh, I signed, uh, put pen to paper that very morning. And then of course it was another, I think it was another two weeks before I ended up coming down to, um, to Barnsley. But the reason that Barnsley attracted me was, like I said, it was a, a community, it was a community place. Uh, and my father obviously was a miner and he was a miner obviously all his life because in them days that was all there was to do. It was either the mines or it was the steelworks in Consett where I come from. I was fortunate that my brother brought me down and of course you come down with your belongings and so on and so forth. And he dropped me off and it was people called Spenceleys. Now they had a boarding house up Dodworth Road. So my brother dropped me off outside Spenceley's that all the arrangements would be made for me to obviously. But there was three or four other players in the same, uh, same, uh, same house. There was like Sir George Kerr, there was Alan Hopper, and there was a lad called um, Bob Nickel. They dropped me off and there was five of us at the time was staying in Spenceley's house. And funny enough, smack across the road was was uh, the physiotherapist called Fred Semley. But it was a wrench, it was a wrench. I'll never forget one time, you know, because obviously you do get a bit homesick, you've never been away from, from, from before. And things that obviously comes about and whatever, never forget. He, I used to go back for weekends and there was a lad called Colin Rutherford. And he came down from Sunderland, Colin, and he had one of these little mini miners. And I used to go up weekends. I used to go up most weekends, obviously because you do get a bit homesick and whatever. And this Monday, I came, we came back Monday for training, because we used to come back on Sunday night and whatever to make sure we were in for training. And Johnny Steele called me in the office and I thought, what the hell on earth? And he says, I've got to say, he says, that your living is here now. And from that day, what he said to me then, 
I'll never forget it. He says, are you living us here now? And I didn't go up as often. I didn't go up as often. Because Johnny Steele was probably, he was bouncy through and through. He worked his socks off, him and Norman Remington. They worked the socks off. He was my first manager and he was dedicated to Barnsley Football Club. He wanted, he just wanted Barnsley Football Club. And same with Norman. Norman was exactly the same. I must have played about uh, four, three or four years before I was established in the first team. And uh, I played odd game, came in then, came in, out, dropped out and so on. So I never thought I was going to get established. But once I got established, I made my mind up, our, uh, they never moved me, they couldn't move me. Team sheet used to go up on a Friday morning. And I tell you what, you couldn't get near it. You were pushing each other <laughs> to make sure I'd see. It. it was a better atmosphere because the terracing, the terracing, everybody liked the terracing. But unfortunately, the, the thing that happened at Hillsborough has uh, brought all the sheeting in. We used to run out down the middle of the thing and the, to the raw I always say the raw of the crowd on either side. And then, of course, you the, the John Smith's, John Smith's logo across the top of the stand. Never, ever forget that. In 1966-7 we had financial difficulties. What are your memories of that period? We always struggled. We always struggled as a club, financially. Because we were only getting crowds, obviously. We weren't doing, we weren't doing that great. We were only getting crowds of probably two, two and a half thousand people in them days. I've even been down here when the cameras was rolling because they were talking about us. And this was Look North and Calendar, all these, te all these uh, uh, television programmes of going into uh, administration because we were so poor. In 67-68 we got promoted to the third division as runners-up. Yeah. What were your feelings on that time? That was fantastic, team? that was a great year. And then that's when the crowd started to pick up. We used to then average nearly 10, 12,000 people. Every day, it was a pleasure obviously to come into. From seeing it, nearly go into administration to what that year came, came about with crowd-wise and so on. It was fantastic to run out down the centre of the park where, where the old dressing rooms used to be. It was marvellous. You couldn't wait to get to the ground in them days. Whereas in the, in the earlier years when we were struggling financially, it was, uh, it was hard work to come down and motivate yourself. Or the managers obviously to motivate yourself because it was, we were struggling. But that season, never ever forget that season. It was fantastic. And we even had a celebration dinner at the old Kerrisford Hall. How good was that? We were, it was fantastic. And of course, we were so confident that there was nobody that we weren't frightened of any team or whatever like to beat us. I've got photographs, or there's photographs somewhere in the stadium of being mobbed by the crowd. And you're in the middle. You're in the middle. And there's hundreds and hundreds, like we see now when people, their teams are getting promotion. You're in the middle. And there's a police chief superintendent, guard near and whatever from the crowd. I'll never ever forget that as long as I live. And I'm not just saying a hundred. The, the, the ground was full. The whole ground. You couldn't see a green patch on Oakwell. It was just, always remember that. In 1972, you were the, the supporters player of the year, so yeah. you were well liked by the fans. What were your feelings at that time? Being Brilliant. Brilliant. It was superb. And at the time, obviously to get the the, the, the most votes, the most votes of any other player of the year, whatever it did, Barnsley Football Club, was fantastic. And to obviously being nominated by all the, all the supporters and whatever at that time, it was just a bit special. What we did, we used to report for training, obviously. Report for training, probably we used to come in for about nine o'clock, half past nine, for a 10 o'clock start. We used to do probably two hours training and not like it is today. It's, um, it's, it was a different character. We used to do a lot of running in them days. I'll never forget the story of God love Norman. I'll never forget the story with Norman Remington. We only had the one ball. <laughs> so there was no way that we could have practice matches. We could do anything because we used to keep it for the, the main match, which was the only, match we, uh, only ball we had. So we couldn't do ball practice and ball drills and things like that. I always tell the story about no wonder they've got ability today because they train with the ball. Even the goalkeeper, even goalkeepers, they've got good ability because they're working with balls as well, you see. Uh, but we never had anything like that. Oh, we used to do a lot of running. 
And the worst one that was, the, the hardest one I ever worked under, was uh, a fella called Jim Eiley. Jim used to run our legs off. The story comes that we, we, we used to play on a, on a, on a Saturday, and it doesn't matter how, how you went on at football, we used to, we used to report in it uh, Monday at uh, 10 o'clock, and then we used to run, for the people that knows, we used to do right across the car park, we used to go down Pontefract Road, as far as Cundy Cross, and then we used to run back up Rotherham Road, down, uh, down Burton Road, yeah, down Burton Road, up Harbour Hill, which is like that. <laughs> then we used to end up all back at the at the Oakwell, as the down the tunnel. We used to all wait, and then we used to have a walk around till we recovered, so called, till we recovered. We used to do laps. 75 seconds, if you didn't do a lap round this ground in 75 seconds, you do it again. And I tell you what, we used to work out, we used to work our socks off. And we're all feared of our, uh, Jim, because Jim was, he was a hard man. But I've got to tell you, halfway down Cundy Cross, when we used to do this, this run on a, on a Monday morning, Mick Buxton used to be sat in his car. Now, if you know Cundy Cross itself, Mick used to sit on the corner. We couldn't see him, we didn't know this. And if you cut through to go up, uh, up one at the estate, instead of going right round the corner, right round to the roundabout, if you cut through the stair, didn't matter how fast you came, how, how well you did, you used to have to do it again. <coughs> used to make you do it again. I tell you, we used to run our legs off. We used to do pre-season training, and there were slopes up the, up the, up the side of the, the Queen's ground, they were like that. And I tell you what, like a ski store. Ah, you talk about training. We used to run up and down there, pre-season training. Oh, a, Jim was the hardest man that I ever trained with. How we got financially more secure was we played at Southport one Friday night. And by the time we got away, and there was two players in, in, in the team at that time. There was a lad called Anton Outelowski. And he could dig and all, and he was a, he was a smashing player and a lad called Martin Gorry. We never got away from Southport at the time till about three o'clock in the morning because the manager at West Ham, who took Anton in the end, they were all negotiating and John, John uh, for uh, West Ham, one of the older managers. But anyway, he signed Anton Outelowski and they got a lot of money for him and they signed then, they signed for West Ham Anton for West Ham and Martin for obviously Newcastle United. And that was the start of obviously fetching some finance into Barnsley Football Club. And it was Jim Eiley that obviously did all that. The manager that brought more more professionalism to Barnsley Football Club was Alan Clark. This was Alan's first managerial job. And I've got to say that he brought Alan. When, when, when he called all the players together, it was Jerry Young who was first team coach at the time, and he got all the players together and we're all waiting to meet, meet Alan Clark in the dressing room, in the home dressing room. And we heard these steps coming up to the dressing room, we're all looking at each other, all the lads of course. And uh, when he walked in, Alan Clark, I've got to tell I've told the story time. He, we thought, we thought, God, we thought he, would, he looked like God. He came with his mohair, grey mohair suit on, white, white shoes. I tell you, he looked the part. He was brilliant. And he always dressed like that, did Alan. And we're all looking and thought, who's he's walked in here like? And then, of course, doing the things. But he did, he did obviously bring all this, his ideas, what he, what he, what he brought from, uh, from Leeds United. And he did, uh, he brought all the professionalism into the club at that time, because we'd never seen anything like that. To say, say what, you know, you'd, you'd played in front of 1,500 people and whatever like, and we had one ball to share, to share, he got whatever he wanted, Alan. Alan promoted me to work with him at, um, at uh, the first team when he first came. So he was only here, mind he, he, he stopped me playing, because he says I was past it. I was probably the oldest player in the football league at the time. I was 38 when I finished me. My first, oh, my last professional game, and Alan then said, called me in, and he asked me in the boardroom, and he says, he says, I want you to uh, take over the youth team under 18s, which was that day intermediates. That's what they called it. 
the intermediates, and the likes of McCarthy, Joe Joyce, all these players, they all came from it, and uh, Banks, David Speedy, I could go on and go on with these players, and uh, they all made the first team, of course, and uh, he said, uh, he said, I want you to look after the, the, the second, the intermediates, he says. But I was still playing in reserves, of course, as well, helping the other, other younger ones come on. And uh, I was, uh, we won the Intermediate League, I've got to say that. We won the Intermediate League. Not me, it was the players, obviously. But, uh, and I got a call, because we used to train on, a, on an afternoon as well. And he, he, I got a call, Jerry Young came across and said to me, he says, the gaffer wants to see you. And that was Alan, of course. And uh, I had a go, and I thought, what on earth, I don't know. So he called me in the office, and I'll never forget it. He says, I've been offered Manny Cousins, this was in 1980, Manny Cousins has offered me the job uh, at Leeds United. And he says, I want you to come with us. And he says, I'm gonna give, he says well, I'll give you a four year contract, double my wages, and I tell you, I says, yeah, I'll go. And I spent all my time down here at Dorkwell, doing all what I wanted to do, seeing the good days and seeing the bad days. And I says, yes, I'm going. And so on, he said, Barry, you were a fool to go and whatever. I said, no, I don't think so. So I gave it a try. Martin Wilkinson, who was the youth team scout at the time, he came with us. But he asked Norman to go as well. And Norman, God rest him, he says, no, he says, I'm Barnsley. He says, I want to do Barnsley through and through. And Norman had the chance to go, but he didn't go there. He stopped where he was. In all your times of playing for Barnsley, 569 games, who was your favourite player you played against, or played for, or played, played with? Played with? Yeah. I played really? with quite, quite a few, which obviously the time I spent uh, at Oakwell and the matches I played. I've certainly got to mention Eric, Eric Wynn Stanley. Eric was my favourite, he could play Eric, and I tell you, I always say that Eric, in my opinion, would have got, if he hadn't had uh, ligament troubled in his, uh, his knees, he, uh, he'd have played for England. Mm. He'd have played for England. He came through the intermediates and whatever, Eric. He was a good player. Pat Howard, Pat Howard was always a, he was a what call a, like Eric, a proper defender. Mick McCarthy was always going to be the man. Mick McCarthy. What I liked about Eric, uh, Mick was, uh, he was always your first pick in five aside. Was, uh, was Mick. The reason being is because he even wanted to win five aside. He was a winner. He was a winner, was Big Mick. Who was your favourite player you coached then in your time as a coach at the club when the with Mick McCarthy? I well, like uh, Joe Joyce. I always had a soft spot for Joe. Because when Clark, when Alan Clark gave me the, the, the job, uh, manager of the, uh, or the coach of the intermediates, he, Joe Joyce was my first signing because I obviously got permission from the manager, which you do. And I went up to Concert, we, we, I originated from a place, Concert, in County Durham. And Joe was my first signing, and he came from Concert. And I once saw Joe play, I went to watch an intermediate match at uh, a place up in the northeast, a place called Eden Colry. And I went to watch this match, and Joe had a fantastic game. And this was, Probably, probably six months after I, I got the job with the intermediate coach. And I, I, I asked Alan Clark, could I go up and, and sign him or whatever like? And he says, yeah, he says, you go and sign him. And you know what Joe came from? from his mum was a, a very educated man, was, was uh, Joe. His mum was a, a, a school teacher. And they wanted me to go to the university, Joe. And it was a family of nine, it was Joe. And I go up to the northeast, knock on the door, whatever and Joe's in with his family and whatever. And I told him what I'd come up for. And his mother says, no, he's not, he's not going to be a professional footballer. He could, only, he could only end up probably 12 months or whatever, like as a, as a pro. We want him to go to uh, Liverpool University. We want him to go to university, Joe. And uh, anyway, I convinced him. I said, let him come down. He could come down for 12 months. If he doesn't like it, he could go to university then. And I tell you what, he always talks about that when we, when, we, when we get in discussion, me and Joe. He still remembers that time when I'm sat on the settee in the house. Imagine this, nine, nine, family of nine, Joe. And he, uh, he always talks about that. He said, when my mother wanted us to go to 
And I says to him, I convinced him, I says, let him have a go at this professional year. And that's how well he did with Joe. He ended up with testimonial and everything with Joe. Joe was a good player. It's a different world now, which we all understand that. Everything's to do with fitness. We've got fitness coaches, fitness trainers, all these. In our day, we were lucky to get a cup of tea. <laughs> at half time, that. At half time. We used to go out on the pitch 10 minutes early to have your own warm up and whatever. When we played, we could kick each other. And you used to get up and you used to get on with the game. But it was great to play in my day. It was, it was harder. It was harder. Because we had to work ourselves. We had to look after ourselves. Not like now at the fitness coach. You go in the dressing room, I always say this. The, you, you, the, the training shirts is all put up for you. There's more, more um, fruit on the table, fitness drinks, energy drinks, that we didn't know existed at our time. But we know it's a different game now. I used to love the fans. The fa and the fans used to like me. I tell you what the fans always liked. They always liked somebody, and they could tell. Somebody that gives you 120%. Doesn't matter how bad you are, how good you are, how many goals you've scored, it doesn't matter. As long as they say you're giving 120%. 569 appearances, how proud does that make you feel? It makes us feel very, very proud because it, 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 we're still involved at the football club, which makes it better, to be quite honest, because all these players that's coming down to Barnsley Football Club, and to think that obviously, you have played more games than anyone else on Oakwell all the years that I've been watching Barnsley Football Club as well as playing for Barnsley Football Club. It makes me very, very proud indeed. You're still involved with club, as you've said, uh, hosting match days in Legend Suite yeah. and giving guest guided tours around Oakwell. Uh, you obviously love the town and the club. Why is that? Oh, because, because of the same sort of people as what I was brought up with in the mining community. Everybody's friendly, everybody. It, it's nice when you, you, you're still working as well, or still uh, doing something down at the, the club which you first started. And I love the people of, of, of Barnsley. That's what attracted me in the first place. Because you come down and you, 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 you know obviously it's a mining community. There's a lot of people from the northeast where I come from. A place called Krukor, which was a mining village. And there's a lot of people when they closed the mines up in the northeast, they all came down to Barnsley to work in the mines at Barnsley because they were still open while they were closing them up in the northeast of Consett. So there was a lot of, lot of miners came down from the northeast. And for that to, to happen, obviously, the, the, the way where obviously you, you, were, you were brought up and the people are so friendly, which, the, which, which is what, we, what we've been brought up with. Well, the people of Barnsley are the top people. And I've always got on with people of Barnsley. Always. Because they're my sort of people. I've had a fantastic life at Barnsley Football Club. And I'll never forget Barnsley for what they've done for me. And I've done for them, of course. And I love Barnsley. Barnsley's a fantastic. And to get what we've got now, and got the stands we've got now here, and the crowd, especially going away from home, is just a bit special and long may it continue.